Hi, I'm Alex Popoff, Product Manager of Windows Networking. We're here to show you some new networking features with Windows XP, some of which we could not even show you at the Expert Zone briefing on May 18th because they were not publicly announced at the time. But first, before we go on to that, let's take a look at the presentation portion of the briefing. Thank you. What I'd like to start with is, is maybe a little bit about our vision, um, the connected home vision. What we, what we really mean uh, by our vision is, is an effortless, effortless home networking environment, something very simple that allows for really cool, compelling scenarios. It is way beyond just file and print sharing. What we, what we really have in a connected home vision are some key elements. First of all, you can build the network with no new wires. Um, with the new <coughs> networking technologies, a wireless 802.11, home PNA, a lot of these uh, networks can be built in the home today with the infrastructure you have or uh, just a buying additional stuff. It does not require new wires to be run in the walls. I think that's one of the key points that we really want to, um, to uh, say about our, our vision of home networking. Another one is that a network is, is, is sort of always on. In, in addition to, there's a big correlation between broadband networks or broadband connectivity to the home either through cable modem or DSL networks and those that have networks in their home. The always on, always available will give you quick access to just about anything that you need or want most. Services, uh, data, new media types as well. We also, also we want a big component is fast internet. It has to be quickly convenient, uh, quickly accessible in addition. It has to be, I should be able to go and, and hit a key and get to the yellow pages faster than I can go and pull that book up and look at the yellow pages. Um, I know that uh, once I got broadband access and a network in my home, I don't, look at, I don't look things up anymore in the newspaper. I quickly go to, to my local uh, spots on the network and, and find what I need. And it's very, very convenient for both my wife and, and myself and the rest of my family. Um, the Connected Home Vision is also about new apps and new media. More and more media today is, is now uh, stored in digital and transported in digital format. And while, while that is cool, it's still uh, the PC is, becomes the, the central place for that storage and the central place for that manipulation. But the Connected Home Vision goes a little bit beyond that. It also requires that the that the new devices and, and legacy devices that we have in our homes today, that is the television sets and the stereos that we have in our home today, they also become part of the uh, connected home vision. Um, it's one thing to be able to use the PC to manipulate data to your photos um, and things like that, but that's not necessarily the place that I want to view those photos and, and it's not necessarily the place that I want to view the audio clips that I have uh, purchased through, through the internet in a very convenient way. So it also includes uh, trying to take things like your TVs and your stereos and making them networkable today. We're going to show you a little bit of technologies that Microsoft is doing to enable that. Um, but it's, it's really about simplifying and making those kinds of scenarios easier. Uh, what, I, what I really would like to do is take the audio and the video clips and uh, perhaps even the pictures, the photos that I have on my, uh, on my PC and get them to my living room. I would like to have that, that old family slideshow. I would like to be able to take uh, Windows Media Technology audio and play it to my legacy stereo system. What really is required there is that basic networking infrastructure and Windows XP is bringing some of that, that technology to, to reality. Well, we also have a little bit of of work to do to make this to happen. And we have a vision, now we need to under, understand what reality is. Today, we have to make networking easier. We have to make network devices that just work. We have to uh, make the network just work. Most people don't understand how to configure a TCP IP stack or what even TCP IP stands for. Um, so we can, we today's, with the power of uh, today's PC, the power of today's software and operating systems, we can make uh, networks that can, that can self-configure themselves and make it easier to troubleshoot and to create some of the compelling scenarios that I tried to describe bef before. And as, again, as I said again, it's beyond just the, just the sharing of printers and files. It's, it's creating exciting entertainment and rich communications. 
So that, that's the work that, that has really sort of left to do. I think with Windows XP, we've come a long ways to make things just work from a, from a networking infrastructure point of view and from the, the, what we call the, the network plumbing. Um, that, that's going to enable the, the addition of new scenarios, new applications, uh, family calendaring, uh, the, the, the slideshow uh, service in the, in the, on the TV. Those types of uh, scenarios are, are just about in reality today. Hi, this is Alex again. As you just heard, Windows XP has some great new networking features. Let, let's take a closer look. My colleague here, Matt McGinnis, is about to show you some great demonstrations of these new features. Okay, I wanted to show you some of the things that Alex talked about to make the network just work. And I'll start off by showing home networking. On my PC, I have the option to set up a home or small office network. So this is presented to me right from my network places. When I click that, it launches a wizard that even the most basic person can step through. I'm sure that you, as, piece, as uh, expert zone experts, are called upon frequently by your brothers-in-laws or your parents or your sisters to help you with things like home networking. So imagine how much easier your life is going to be with this wizard. For example, as I step through this wizard, there's a checklist right there for the user for creating a network. When I click on that checklist, it brings up a page with all of the steps necessary to successfully create a home network. And it even has information on what exactly a network adapter is or how to select the right hardware. Of course, we know that a lot of your friends and family aren't going to actually ever use that checklist. They're going to be using you. So this network setup wizard also has a lot of built-in intelligence to make sure that they are making the right selections as they step through. So for example, it will automatically detect the state of the computer. And if the user selects some other state, for example, connecting to the internet directly through a network hub and tries to continue through the wizard, the network setup wizard actually presents them with a warning saying setting up a network in this configuration is actually not recommended because it's not secure. So it has, again, some intelligence built in to help make sure users don't make mistakes when they go through the network setup wizard. So I'm going to cancel out of that because I've actually already walked through it. And I'm going to look at my network connections. So these are the network connections that are available on my machine. There's the one that connects to the internet and you see the hand on there, and you see the little lock on the icon that indicates that it's shared and the lock is that it's secured. And it's actually secured with a firewall. So let's look at some of the advanced settings here that you will be interested in, but again, you'll probably want to make sure that your friends and family don't mess with these settings too much. The internet connection firewall is automatically enabled when the network setup is wizard is run. And I can actually adjust things such as uh, which ports are open so that if I wanted to set myself up as an email server or an internet server, I could do that. I can also do some basic logging. So there are some very basic features that are in this, um, in the internet connection firewall that make it easy to secure your network. It is a stateful packet filter, so it is all of the security that most people will need. Let's take a look at what this looks like on the client machine now. When a client is connected to the home network, as you can see, I have my network connections open on my client machine, and I have everything from a wireless network connection to a local area connection that is indicated right now that it is unplugged, and I also have my internet gateway. I can actually control the internet gateway as well from the client machine. So for example, if I wanted to make a phone call right now and I was connected over a dial-up connection, I could click disable to disable this connection and start using my phone right away. I also can look at the properties of my connections, my network adapters. So for example, let's say I have a uh, an issue if I'm concerned that my network isn't working properly, I can open this up, bring up the support tab, and I can actually I have a repair option as well. So again, you guys as the experts may tell somebody and walk somebody through all of these various steps, everything from can you ping it, can you do an IP release renew. This repair button does pretty much everything for you so that you don't have to walk somebody through those steps. All they have to do is click one button and it automatically renews their IP address 
and resets everything. So those are just some of the ways that we're making uh, networking just work. Something else that I want to show you is wireless. So this machine that I'm using right here is my laptop that I carry back and forth between work and home. You can see on the screen now I am in my work setting. I have a wireless connection at work. I have a network cable at work. Uh, these are all my shares that are available to me at work. If I look back at my network connections here, what I'm going to do is pay attention now. I'm going to uh, disconnect my wireless access point from work to simulate roaming between work and home. So if you pay attention to the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you'll watch the IP address change and you'll get a number of messages. So now I'm going to unplug the access point from work to simulate leaving work. This will just take a moment while the machine detects that the wireless connection is no longer available. And you see it comes back up with a new IP address as it acquired the other access point that I have here, which simulates my wireless access point at, at home. And this could be a wireless access point at a coffee shop or in an airport as well. The wireless roaming works seamlessly between any kind of wireless network, 802.11 wireless network. Now notice that I'm at home. On the screen, you see a number of changes. First of all, there's an internet gateway there now, which you saw earlier. Uh, also, if I go to my local network here, if I refresh this screen, you'll see a new device. An access camera has appeared. This is actually a UPnP camera. So it is automatically discovered uh, and automatically configured via UPnP on my network. If I open up this camera from here, you actually can see the image of the camera. I'll wave my hand in front of it here. I'm going to make this screen a little larger. I can actually administer the camera as well from here. So this the camera has its own administration uh, built right into it. And again, I didn't have to install any drivers for this camera at all. So I could change the image settings, for example, if I wanted to change the resolution or the size, I could do any of those things. Also notice when I look at my network connections on my wireless card, I can get the properties that show how long I've been connected, the speed of my connection, and actually the signal strength as well, which is showing is excellent right now, with, as you can see from all of those green bars. So these are just some of the ways that we're making networking just work. We've improved home networking, making it easier for the average user to get up and running with a home network. We've improved wireless so that it's easy to roam between work and home and other wireless locations. And we're adding intelligence into the operating system and working with other vendors to add universal plug and play support so that devices just work when you plug them into the network. You don't have to worry about configuration or drivers. Thank you very much. Hi, this is Alex again. One of the features we're real excited about in Windows XP is real-time communications. My colleague, Ahmad Yani, is here to present and demonstrate this exciting new feature, which has just been announced. Okay, thank you, Alex. We're really excited today to share some uh, technologies and experiences that will ship with Windows XP that we could not show you during the Expert Zone event here on campus. This was not announced at the time, so we couldn't share it with you, but we wanted to get it to you. It's going to be announced by the time you receive this video. So um, let's go ahead and start talking about real-time communications in Windows XP. Today, the computer, the PC, has been a great medium to do text communications, real-time communications, or emails, uh, chat, or instant messaging. But it hasn't really reached its full potential for voice and video communications, or application sharing, or remote assistance for that matter. For the most part, people have used it to do mostly ch uh, chatting and text. There are also some new challenges that are, that are awaiting us for real-time communications. Some of the businesses will be using this for uh, customer relationship management in their contact centers, and some uh, uh, industries will be using this for multiplayer uh, games so that uh, friends and family can play together over the Internet. So the summary of this is that you know, real-time communications has been a great technology, but it has not really been a great experience. And just to 
take a look at why that it hasn't reached its full potential, let's look at how communications today is done. Today you have the ability to do voice communication or video or collaboration, instant messaging, but it has not really been adopted very well because for the most part the experiences has been separate. So people had to go to voice uh, using a certain experience, video using a different experience, different application, same thing with text, same thing with collaboration. And the infrastructure that supported these experiences has been, have been separate. So different infrastructure were put in place to communicate through voice, different infrastructure have been put in place to communicate through video or text. So for the most part, um, deploying these solutions and using these solutions have not been very easy. So what are we doing in Windows XP to change that? Well, we have a vision for communication in Windows XP where we want to provide a great user experience that make real-time communications a reality for all users. So that it becomes as simple as a mouse click to go from text to voice to video. And we are also providing a platform, a client as well as a server platform that's industry standard based and that will enable breakthrough innovative solutions for our partners and solutions that will go beyond just simple communication between friends, families and colleagues. So what will that make the industry look like? So the new era of real-time communication will look more like this. It will have one unified experience that will span multiple devices. So it's not only limited to the PC, it also spans to uh, maybe Windows CE based devices as well as other embedded devices. The experience will be unified so that you don't have to start different applications or get used to different experiences to go from text to video to voice as well as the, the infrastructure that supports it will be unified. So we will be using standard-based common technologies and common platform that will integrate these experiences together and will allow much easier deployment. The experience that we are providing with Windows XP is called Windows Messenger, and this is what we are announcing now. Windows Messenger has some great features that will make it uh, mainstream use. It's very easy to use. There's one single place to go for communication. So you start Windows Messenger and from there you can go to text, to voice, to video, to collaborations. It's intuitive and personal. It's very simple for people to invite each other to these kind of sessions. It's all presence-based, so you don't have to go around looking for people or call your friends and family to try and get them to start communicating with you. Their presence is in front of you as well as going from PC to PC communication, which is free for the, for the most part, to PC to, to telephone uh, communications, Windows Messenger will allow you to, to do that over low cost communication. So you will be able to do this PS, uh, PC to phone communication at a much lower cost than you do today. The quality of the experience has been greatly, greatly enhanced. Ease of use is a great thing, but also the quality has to be great, Although this won't be, otherwise this won't be adopted. One of the improvements we've done in the, in the platform is we've licensed some technologies from PictureTel. Um, one of the technologies uh, is acoustic echo cancellation. Acoustic echo cancellation cancels the, the voice and the sounds coming from the speaker from the microphone. So now you don't hear any feedback. For the most part today when you talk you really need a headphone when you use uh, applications such as NetMeeting. So it becomes unusable. Some people don't want to buy a headphone, some people wanna use, don't want to use a headphone because there is no space. So some people want to use the speaker. And acoustic echo cancellation will make uh, using the PC and the speakers a reality. Uh, we've also included and licensed some improved uh, audio codecs in the platform. These audio codecs at some point are better than phone quality. They do uh, encoding that is better than what's done over the regular telephone network. We've improved, improved the, uh, the latency. We added uh, dynamic jitter uh, buffers that uh, expand and contract depending on the quality. The codex is uh, handled dynamically. So when the network uh, conditions are good, we use a codec that requires higher bandwidth. When the network conditions are bad, we dynamically uh, um, use a lower, um, a lower band bandwidth uh, requiring codec. It's also extensible. We are proud to say that we are supporting the IETF session initiation protocol, which allows this multimodal session uh, establishment, as well as uh, uh, instant messaging and presence. So this will be great to interoperate with other um, infrastructures out there. Uh, it, we're also providing um, 
APIs for the client as well as the server so that the industry can build and offer much more customer choice and, and offer a great industry opportunity. So with that, let me invite uh, Matt to the stage. Matt's going to be my partner here in the demo. We're going to do a Windows Messenger demo. So as you see, this is my Windows Messenger client up here, up on the right, screen on my, uh, right corner of my screen. And Matt as well can see his Windows Messenger client. He doesn't really have to have the Windows Messenger client uh, up there all the time. Uh, it could be uh, minimized or it could be just running in the background it will also work for him and give him the notifications. So I can see that Matt is online and I can see that my other uh, contacts here, um, Greg and Sean, are not online, they're offline. So there's really no point in me communicating with them right now. I can do that through email and that's possible to do through here. So I can see that Matt is online. One of the things that I want to talk about here is that we go a little bit beyond what's called presence. Presence is me seeing that Matt's online and Matt seeing me online. We go into the ability of um, controlling your own online status and making your, your contacts see what online status you want them to see. So for example, right now, right now I'm online. If I receive a phone call, I could come here and go to on the phone. So now Matt can see that I'm on the phone and he really should not be at least doing voice with me. I can uh, go back and do busy or be right back or whatever I need to do. And this is something that can be added to all the time. So we can add new things such as um, in dinner with the family. So you really should not be uh, um, doing any kind of voice or even I am with me when I'm, when I'm having dinner. Windows Messenger also has the capability of detecting when you are away, when you haven't had enough um, enough uh, interactivity with, the, with, the, with your PC for a certain time. And this is different for different people. For example, with me, when I'm in the office for, for a, a, certain, uh, a certain amount of time, I'm always using my PC. So if I'm not using my PC for five minutes, I'm out of the office. So I can go in here, Tools, Options, can pull up Preferences. And this is the time that I have set for myself. So it says, show me as a way when I'm inactive for five minutes, because I'm probably not in my office. There are people that might be using this on a broadband connection at home, uh, on an always on connection, a cable or DSL, having a PC in the kitchen or in the living room. And they might set this to 60 minutes, for example, for an hour, because they really want people to communicate with them. Just because they are not using the PC, it, it doesn't mean that they are away. So I'll set that to this. Okay, now I'm going to invite Matt here for a conversation. So I'll say, hi, Matt. How about a demo? Okay. So now Matt got an invitation on his screen, and Matt will go ahead and click on that and accept my invitation. Okay, now Matt, start typing me a message. As you can see down here, it shows Matt is typing me a message. You know, when people speak with each other, they usually listen, and when the other person is finished, then they can start speaking, uh, for the most part. Um, but how do you do that with, with text? Um, Windows Messenger has the feature of showing me at the bottom of, this, of, my, of my screen here that Matt is typing a message, so I shouldn't really start typing on, myself, on my own. I should wait for him to finish. So that's great. Now, Matt said, sure would you like me to do? Okay, with a smiley face, that's great. So now we are communicating and I can type some uh, messages to him and I can say, okay, let's do voice, okay? Now, I can go easily from text to voice and start talking with a single mouse click and it's very obvious, very intuitive, say start talking and I'm gonna go ahead and click on start talking and now Matt will, will receive an invitation again, and he will accept the invitation. And as you will see, we are talking to each other. So you can see the speakers and the microphone. Uh, there is activity there. We can go ahead and mute it for, for this purpose of the demo. So I'm going to mute my side, and Matt will mute his side. Okay, great. So now we are talking, and as I mentioned, this quality is really beyond anything you've experienced before. We have really included some breakthrough technology in the kernel in, in Windows XP so that the, the audio experience will become something people want to use over and over again. So now that we are speaking, 
I can, for some reason, I want to see Matt. I want to, I want to see my my mother across the country. So I can do a start camera, and that will again send Matt an invitation, so that we can start um, seeing each other on video. And all, I, all I have to do is click accept. Click here. accept. That's all you have to do. It's pretty easy. That's all you have to do. So now me and Matt can see each other on video. Now you can see that. Uh, I'm on the video with Matt because we're standing next to each other, but that will not be the case uh, when you use this, because hopefully you use this to communicate with your friends, colleagues, and family across the country. And you can see that I have picture in picture of myself here on video while I'm talking to Matt. I can go in here and I can disable that so I can see the full view of, of Matt's video over here without seeing myself, or I can go back in here and add it. Okay, so that's been real-time communication. It's really great and exciting stuff, and it's really going to change the way people communicate. We think the PC with this kind of interface will, will, let people, will let people use this over and over again. They want to come back to it and use it as the, the, the device of choice for communication. But it's not where, it's, where, it, where it ends. This is real-time communication. We also have a great collaboration features in this uh, client. So I can come here and I can say, send file to Matt. Tell me which file you want to send. I want to pick fax setup and I'm going to click open. And the same thing, Matt will get an invitation and Matt, Matt can accept the invitation. And some, some uh, security here where it tells him that, okay, well, this is a, a, a file you're receiving over the internet, so you should be careful. And then- I, I trust you though, so I'll click okay. Yeah, it's a fax then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the file has been transferred and now Matt Matt got the file somewhere where he, um, where, where he set it up to be. Okay, so besides this, I can go in here and I can go to Matt and I can do a couple of other things and invite him to. I can invite him to start application sharing with me. I can invite him to start doing whiteboarding so we can do some, um, some drawings together. None of us here is an artist, so we really should not do that. Uh, although we'll start it up for you. And we can also start doing application sharing and uh, remote assistance. So remote assistance is a, is a great feature that's included with, um, with Windows XP. And this allows you to do remote assistance at, on real time. So while you're on, on line with uh, your brother-in-law or while you're on line with uh, uh, a contact center, a customer center for where you bought your PC, uh, they can start to help you right there and then you don't have to wait for them to, to come online at a certain time. So let's go ahead and do application sharing. And this will bring up uh, a small application sharing icon here at the top uh, and start connecting. So I'll wait for a second to do that. That's up here where it says sharing session. So as you can see, I can do app sharing, I can do whiteboarding. Okay, and now I'll do, let's share this PowerPoint presentation. Okay, let me minimize this right here. So I'm gonna share the PowerPoint presentation that I, that I have here on my screen. And now Matt will receive that. Now he can see my, my screen. And I'm going to do, I want, we're going to do some collaboration here. So I want Matt to go ahead and type something for me. So I'm going to allow him control. And now Matt will go and request control. So I'll say accept. And now I'll wait for Matt to, and as you can see on my screen, Matt is now driving. So he's driving the application. He'll go in there and he'll type something for us. It's great. It's great. It's cool. <laughs> All right. So now uh, I, if I'm, if I'm getting scared for a reason over here and I, I just don't know what's happening, I can just take, take back control by just doing an escape. And now he doesn't have control on, anymore. I can go back and allow control or I can just close this. So that's great. Another thing we can do, as I said, is whiteboarding. So I come here and now we have a whiteboarding session. So now we can start drawing together on the screen. And this is probably going to be great for kids. Okay, so that was good. Let's end this. All right. So, so I'll close this. And now, as I mentioned, I can come in here and I go to Matt. Matt's my expert, so I can go to Matt and I say, Matt, you know, I want you to, do, to, to help me with something. Just do a, a, a remote, start remote assistance. And that will bring up another invite to Matt saying that I want him to help me, and he will accept that. And now that he has accepted that, Matt can go ahead and control my computer and start to, to do some fixes. So, as we said, 
Windows Messenger is going to really change the way people communicate, is going to change the way people collaborate, it's easy to use, it's got a lot of quality features in there, and it's going to make real-time communications a reality for the mainstream market. Thank you very much, and I hope you um, go home and use this feature and um, evangelize it to your colleagues and friends and uh, let us know what else we can put in there to make it even better. Thank you very much.